All right. We're just getting set up here. Can I give it a minute? Mm. Hi. It is so great to see you all here and to be here. Just waiting as everything gets set up with the analytics and I'll be able to just be present here for you today. We are talking about anchoring in the new earth. So what is the new earth? And this is the beginning of the discussion here at the Sacred Healers Collective. And we have all been getting information, intuition, guidance, things that are coming through continually. So many downloads over the last year and a half. And even for the five years building up to this time, so many of us with intuitive abilities and connection have been getting this message like it's coming it's coming something big is coming it's happening now it's happening soon so what does that mean and then it happened and it was a surprise to a lot of us a lot of us it was a surprise when it actually did happen even though we were waiting for so long for the big thing to happen and we're all left shell-shocked like oh crap what are we going to do now how are we going to support ourselves how are we going to support people in this world how are we going to stand up strong with our spine straight and step forward as the healers that we know that we are in this world and that's the real question so then we began to get downloads so much downloads so many things and i believe that we're still in the middle of the portal as we step through into the new paradigm so the new earth is about the shifting of paradigms that's happening and we're seeing it in the government we are seeing it in our relationships in our intuitive life we're seeing it in businesses we're seeing it with social media and the internet we are seeing these paradigm shifts with civil rights movement and the empowerment movements that are happening as people are realizing their voices in a new way they're learning to live from a new center of love of intuition of open-mindedness and as intuitives as healers as those who receive empaths those who receive information within the world, we have a responsibility to anchor that information into this reality that is currently occurring for people. So even though we're moving forward into a new paradigm, we're still currently in the portal of that paradigm. And how do we step through this portal in a way that is anchored and solid? How do we be the foundation of strength for the people that we're here to serve and to heal? And that's the real question for me as a healer, because as I have put myself back together, once I was done with my own shell shock from this whole situation, I realized so many layers were being cleared and released from me as I was receiving these downloads and getting this information. And it was so important for me to be receiving that information and to be continuing to let those old layers slide away from me and be removed. So there's an allowance here of the purging that needs to happen, number one, that we realize that these old traumas are old shame, old ideas of who we thought we were, are clearing out as we step into the new earth. And this is really important as we step forward because that means it's happening for everyone. We are feeling this collectively as healers, as a way, as beacons to support those who are also going through the same thing. So as we walk through our own process, we can help support them by realizing that people may be going through a purging process of their own. And sometimes that purging comes out as anger, sometimes tears, sometimes as drinking too much or indulging in other addictions like uh, cell phones and tv and all these different things eating is a big one for comfort for people but we as healers want to step forward in a heart-centered way and help these people to anchor all of the information that we're receiving and that they are also receiving deep into the present right now so I believe that we are pillars between heaven and earth, that we are these hollow bones that receive information from above and below, but also that we can send anything we need to down into the earth. And as we're doing this work as the pillars, 
we're stepping forward and receiving this information, receiving these downloads, all of the downloads trickling in. And it's overwhelming sometimes. It can feel really disorienting and it can make us get headaches. And people talk about ascension sickness, and this is what they're talking about. So basically you can get headaches, you can feel really dehydrated or dizzy. You can feel really whacked out for a few days sometimes. But if we're not having a daily practice of anchoring and receiving of sitting deep in the earth, even if we're just envisioning that energetically, then we're not really going to be able to help support our clients, uh, those in our community that we're helping to heal. And we need to remember to take exquisite care of ourselves and to continue to allow that information to trickle all the way to our hearts before we speak it. So if we get these downloads into this information, intuitive information from our guides, from the angels, from wherever you're getting your information from, it may just be energetic, it may be light codes, it may be all sorts of different information that you're receiving as a healer in this time. And when we receive this information, it passes through our third eye, through our crown, through our third eye, and then through our throat chakra. And if we speak it at our throat chakra without allowing it to ground down into our heart or even better, all the way down into our first and second chakras, then we are going to be speaking this information without having it be heart centered, without having it be earth based. And if we are truly here to heal other people, to help them support, be supported in their healing, then we need to make sure that we're speaking from our open hearts. I believe that if we're using judgment, if we're telling people what to do, if we're being pushy in the information that we're receiving, then it is going to absolutely turn them away from it. Of course, we may have some people who are open to this type of energy, but this is not the new paradigm. The new paradigm is about heart-centered balance and love. It's about non-judgment. It's about not shaming so when we receive information, we need to allow it to anchor into our hearts, to feel it go all the way down into your heart and then all the way down into your first and second chakra where it may process for a while before it comes back out. And this way we can anchor this information and in all these downloads that we're receiving. And this is the way it should be when we're in a one-on-one -on -one with a client, when we're hosting a group, a sacred ceremony for someone doing healing work with people, we really, really, really want to make sure that we're speaking from our hearts. So I work with the Munaki traditions, the Munaki rites, and they are a set of rites that are handed down from Albert Belaldo, pardon my pronunciation, and he received them from these various tribes in Peru, and they were meant to be shared with as many people as possible as a way to raise our frequency, to raise our vibration intentionally, and to remember our connection with the earth, with the divine feminine, the divine masculine, to remember our connection with the stars, the galaxy, and that we are creators of our own reality. And they believed that we, that our heart was more important than our brain, than our mind. But sometimes as intuitives in, in our modern Western world, we get really caught up in what we're thinking and what we've received and how important it is. But if it is not anchored within our heart, which is the most important part of our communicative ability. The heart is what is the center between the first and second chakras, those roots and that primal, primal, primal version of ourselves and the intuition, that information that's flowing down from the celestial realms. So our heart is where the center is between the two of them. And if we cannot remember over and over again to anchor this information within our hearts, then we are not of the best service to our clients, in my opinion. So remember always mundane over magical. I love magic all day long. I, anybody who knows me, who really knows me knows how much I love magic and I will talk about it forever. It's one of my special interests. It's literally something that I have built my entire life in order to be able to live as a vocational priestess and to practice magic whenever I feel called by my intuition, whenever I feel called on a daily basis, I do magic throughout the day. Some days I use magic for manifesting. I use magic for healing. I use magic for 
in clearing my brain. I use magic for grounding myself, for connecting me with other people. I use magic in all sorts of amazing ways, but I have to always remember and remind myself. And this is part of the practice of being a top-notch magical practitioner, healer, and priestess is that we need to anchor it within the physical world. So if people cannot relate to the work that we're doing, they're not going to be able to hear us. They're not going to be able to hear our intuitive guidance. They're not going to be able to know what we know or feel what we feel. We need to learn how to speak to our clients and to the community in a way that they truly resonate with. And this is going to be different for every single one of you. Every one of you has a unique ability and a unique community that you're speaking to. So when you step forward in your abilities and you're learning more and more and more, part of what you should be learning is about yourself. As you heal yourself and incorporate those lost pieces of you that you gave away or that you feel were taken from you due to abuse or on by choice, as you reincorporate those pieces of yourself back together, you're going to to feel and know who you're truly talking to. And this is the story is that we all have this divine sacred purpose here. We are all phoenixes in a million different ways. And I know I say this all the time, but it's so important that we live these lives where we come up out of the depths of darkness and we shift everything completely are stronger as we step forward into the newest version of ourselves and rise like the beautiful phoenix over and over and over again. But until we become the grounded Phoenix, until we have grounded that energy deep into the physical, deep into the earth, deep into our bodies, we're going to keep doing these death and rebirth cycles, death and rebirth cycles, death and rebirth cycles. How many times do you want to die in this lifetime? <laughs> so we need to keep clearing and healing and facing the shadow and this is a big part of it because we all have this trauma. We all have this shadow side. We all have these depths and darkness, things that we want to hide or things that have been hidden from us during our lifetime. And if we do not look at them and use the light and the intention and the intuition and all of this in information that's coming down to shine the light upon the darkness, then we will not be able to step forward and truly help and heal the clients that we're here to serve. So this is a big part of the magical work that I do and, and the, the real life work that I do. And we work together. I work with my clients and with my community in ways that help them to feel grounded, to feel safe, and to feel that they are receiving consent continually. They're giving consent continually for the work that we're doing. So if your client or student is not saying, yes, I agree to this over and over and over again during your class, then it is not detailed enough. And we have to continue to ask them for their permissions to open them to the energies that we're using and that we're here for. So thank you so much for listening here today. It's an honor to be a part of this community. And I'm really, really enjoying everything that's coming through and I'm so excited for more to come. There's lots of magic in the works right now. And honestly, just so excited for all of the shifts that are happening as we do step forward into the new earth. And we've been anchoring into this for over a year now. And I still believe that we're in the portal, like I said, and I think that it becomes clearer and clearer with each passing day, week, month. It's coming clearer and clearer what we're stepping into, but also there's going to be backlash energetically when we shift into a completely new paradigm. And so then we're seeing that politically, we're seeing that around the world, we're seeing that in our own communities, all this infighting, people being separated. As we're moving into unity consciousness and into this collective endeavor of holding each other, of loving each other, of vibrating at the vibration of peace, of love, of unity consciousness, then we're seeing all this divisiveness happen because the light is shining upon the darkness. So we have to release and remove, we have to release all those things which are still holding the old vibrational frequencies of anger, of fighting together, 
And of course, it's okay to feel anger. All of us should be feeling angry at times. That is a totally normal emotion to feel, but we have to let it pass through our body and come back to a place of forgiveness, come back to a place of love and peace. We have to keep opening our hearts over and over and over again and keep ourselves safe. And we don't need to do it from a place of resentment. If something is inappropriate for us and it's not safe for us, we can just say, no, thank you and move right along. So there's ways that we're gonna learn and that I want us all to just keep talking about with heart-centered communication and saying what we really mean in a loving, honest way without judging or shaming people or without closing our minds to their version of reality. So there's times when people are living in different realities and we see this with Corona, we see this in the government, we see this in the civil rights situations that are happening right now. That some people have moved to this paradigm and other people are still on that paradigm or in a completely different one. And it's normal and natural for that to be the case, but we just didn't realize it before that actually people live in different realms in different paradigms and different realities. And that's okay. Hey, they're all okay, but the higher vibrational frequency that we can connect with for ourselves, the more we can lift and raise the frequential, the vibrational frequency for other people. And this is what I want to keep coming back to. So we want to anchor ourselves continually in our hearts, anchor the information we receive into our hearts into our first and second chakras, our center of creation, and then allow it to flow through us as a channel when we are the hollow bone. We want to sit actually down in the earth, connect with nature in all its forms so that we can hear the song of the universe in a clear and conscious way so that we can become the channel that we say that we are and not just make it stop here in our head, right? We don't want to just receive information from our head and that's it. Because if we do not pull it all the way down into our body, we are not of the greatest service possible to those we're here to serve. So again, thank you so much for being with me here today. Sending you all love and blessings.